Hello guys, it's TPM5 and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to deep dive into Taylor Fritz's rise into tennis superstardom as over the last 18 months he's gone from world number 42 to a superb world number 5. As a junior, Taylor Fritz made at least the quarterfinals of all of the, of the Grand Slams, being named the ITF Junior World Champion in 2015, becoming the third American this century to hold this title after Andy Roddick and Donald Young. Fritz burst onto the scene in 2015 in Nottingham, where he would beat Spaniard Pablo Carreño Busta in his first ATP men's match, and he would later turn pro in September of that year, making it to the top 250 before turning 18 the next month. Fritz would continue his growth into 2016, receiving the ATP Star of Tomorrow award for being the youngest player inside the top 100 of the rankings at age 19. 2017 would be a year laden with injury issues throughout the first half of the tennis season as it, he was forced to skip the clay part of the tour fully. However, he would cap out a disappointing year with an impressive first Grand Slam win against Marcos Bagdadis at the US Open. 2018 would be a pivotal year for Fritz and it seemed that all the positive momentum he had from a career uh, first ever win at a Grand Slam was stunted as he lost in the second round of qualifying in the 2018 Australian Open to journeyman Matthias Borg who has a career high ranking of 140 but Fritz would rebound in a big way following this disappointment and for the rest of 2018 he had results such as making the round of 16 at Indian Wells his first ever Grand Slam third round at the US Open after progressing better results at the other two slams. 2019 would be the best year yet for Fritz as he would make the third round of the Australian Open, a tournament that he hadn't even qualified for the year before, and would bag his first ATP title at the Eastbourne International, defeating Brit Sam Querrey, finishing the year at 32 after being his highest 25th in the world. In the heavily interrupted 2020 season, Fritz would start the year brightly reaching his first ATP final at the Alcapulco in Mexico during March, where he was outed by Rafael Nadal, by his, but his immense effort was rewarded with the then career best number 24th in the world for the ATP rankings. As the general marker for his progress throughout 2020, he would post career best or equal career best results in all of the Grand Slams that were held, obviously with the exclusion of Wimbledon. 2021 would be the definition of an up and down year for the Californian, as during the third round of the Australian Open, he pushed Novak Djokovic, who was en route to another triumph down under to five sets after trailing two sets to love. He would continue this form into the rest of the hard court season with impressive results at Dubai, Doha and Miami. However, the downs came thick and fast for Fritz, who opened the clay court season with a middling to subpar result for his standards and would drop out of the top 30 after the first round defeats in both the Monte Carlo Masters and the Madrid Masters. Fritz would then tear his meniscus in the second round of the French Open and miss out on numerous tournaments in the lead up to Wimbledon, where he would then make a gutsy run to return and lose in the third round against Varev. Fritz will close out 2021 with several impressive runs, including uh, some at Masters tournaments and others at ATP 500 tournaments, helping him recover his rankings, which had dropped as low as 42, to a then career best 23. Leading into 2022, Fritz had high expectations and boy did he deliver. He made his first ever round of 16 appearance at a Grand Slam in Australia and he'd continue this form into the 2022 Indian Wells Masters series where he would embark on a crazy run brushing past Rublev with a straight sets win in the semis and would play with an injured foot against Rafael Nadal who was in the midst of a 20 match win streak but Fritz would break this and cause a major upset winning in straight sets 6-3, 7-6 becoming the first American to win at Indian Wells since 2001. However, there would be pause in the optimism, optimism for Fritz, as despite a better result at Monte Carlo than the year prior reaching the quarters, he would miss the Madrid Open and the Italian Open with a foot injury and would return seated 13th at the Roland Garros to suffer an upset defeat at the hands of Zapata Morales. But things would quickly change for Fritz after a struggling start to the grass court season. He would be crowned, crowned champion at Eastbourne for the second time and would experience his best Grand Slam result to this day, making it to the last eight of Wimbledon, where he would meet against Rafael Nadal again, but the Spaniard would get the last laugh and revenge for the Indian Wells result earlier in the year, winning in an absolute classic match with a fifth set tiebreak. Later on in the year, Fritz would 
lose in shocking fashion in the US Open against Brandon Holt, giving the fellow Californian wildcard his first ever ATP level win, which came as a major shock given the high level of performance that Fritz had had in the US lead up tournaments before the obviously the US Open. Fritz will go on an impressive run at the Tokyo 500, claiming his fourth ATP level title by beating Francis Tifo in the final, becoming the first American man to be inside the top 10 since 2017. He would be faced with a first ever exciting opportunity to play in the ATP finals of 2022, but appeared to miss out after a narrow loss in the Paris Masters uh, in the second round against wildcard Jules Simon and finished ninth, which is obviously one place outside of the final eight. However, Alcaraz would have to pull out due to an injury and it would pave the way for Fritz to, to make it, his first ever appearance in ATP finals, and then lose in the semis after Djokovic dispatched of him. And obviously we reached this year. As it only has just began, there's not too many tournaments to talk about, but he did suffer a disappointing loss against Alexei Poppyrin in the Australian Open, but he shortly after, shortly after he would rebound, becoming champion at Delray Beach after beating Miomir Katsmanovic of Serbia, which will see the offensive baseline and become the highest ranked American player since Andy Roddick in late 2009. And this has happened due to Nadal and Rublev dropping points, leading to Fritz's first ever top five ranking, and obviously, yeah, becoming the first American since Andy Roddick to do such a thing. Fritz will be hoping for more this year, and we're hoping to catch more success at the Grand Slams this, this year too. However, he has yet to peak and is only 25 years of age. He has a strong game consisting of a big serve, powerful forehand, and an innate ability to create unforced errors for his opponents. Some of Fritz's Disappointing performances can be explained by his go big or go home game, which he targets winners, and if he's not on it can lead to way more enforced errors than usual. Fritz will be looking towards the Indian Wells to defend his 1,000 points to avoid a sharp de decrease in the rankings, my bad. And despite uh, Wimbledon not being the next Grand Slam, that is where I think he could have a really big chance to explode and make a semi-finals or even finals run potentially, because he can punch the ball and use his power and utilize the low bounces that the grass court surface allows. Now that will be it for the video, thank you for watching, It's this isn't a once-off tennis video, I'll be coming out with another one, but if you guys like this, feel free to subscribe, tell me in the comments, I might make it something I do more regularly, and until next time, peace out. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Tell me how Fritz will finish the year and until next time, peace out.